Hey everybody, this is my 125 gallon sort of pseudo African themed tank and my Congo Tetras are in here spawning again. I actually came in the room to shoot a video about something else and these guys caught my eye. So we're going to just have a little look at these for a moment while I introduce the true topic of this video which is going to be near and dear to my heart and that is impulse purchases. We've all done it, we all do it. Well, maybe not everybody. I can't speak for everybody, I guess. But it's very common practice. Uh, a lot of us come home with fish we never intended to come home with. And I, myself, was a victim of an impulse purchase today. So let's talk a little bit about impulse purchases. And let's have a look at the impulse purchases I just got. Uh, this is my brackish tank. So when I came home, I lickety split, had to set myself up. Quarantine tank. And this is it. So, before I go any further, yes, you are still watching the same channel. This is my tank. It does have blue gravel, a SpongeBob aquarium, and a really fake looking uh, pseudo Asian mountain waterfall thingy in there. There is a reason for that. There will be a video about that. So, don't stress about it now. Uh, look forward to a video about why this tank looks the way this does. It's coming up real soon, uh, and there is a reason for it. So, as you can see on the left here, I have three black coolie loaches. I'm really excited about them. Those are my impulse purchases. I went out this morning to pick up a few Raspora hats, which you can see right here. No biggie, nothing really to talk about there. Just some Raspora hats that I'm going to be putting in one of my tanks um, that has a small school and a few of them have died recently and I'm just going to bolster the school back up. These, however, are a really, really interesting fish. I've wanted coolie loaches for a while. And I've never seen the black coolie loaches, and I was at the fish store, and the sales associate there was telling me that, oh, we got, look what we got in new today, come here, you know, we're carrying these now, and she showed me these, and I said, all right, I'll take three, because they're loaches, I'm assuming they need to be in a little bit of a group. So, what am I going to do with them? I don't even know, I honestly don't even know what tank I'm going to put them in, and that's what I wanted to talk about with the impulse purchases. We'll go ahead and move away from here now that you've seen them. I don't want to get them all stressed out and have them come up and out of that bag. And again, we will talk about why that tank looks so radically different than my other tanks. I promise there is a video coming up on that real soon. The tank I sort of had them in mind for is this one here, and it is my Gudgeon T-Bar tank. The reason being is coolie loaches are diggers. They basically slither down through the substrate as though it was just a continuation of the water. They don't even slow down for it. They just slip through it like it's not even there. So you got to be careful putting them in tanks that have plant work or delicate rock work that's in the substrate because the coolie loaches will upset it and uproot it and everything else. But in this tank I have this T-bar cichlid that you can see right there front and center. And he is a digger. He just moves the sand around this tank constantly. If he's not doing what he's doing now, which is banging up against the glass asking for food, because he sees me standing here, he's digging. He's picking up sand, and he's moving it around, and he's dropping sand, and he's picking it up again somewhere else, moving around, and he makes big piles, and he just never stops with it. So I figured if ever there's a tank that it isn't going to matter having some, you know, coolie loaches in there disrupting the sand, this would be it. So this is where they're probably going to go. My other option is my Garami tank, which already has a lot of loaches in it of different species, and it has some other reclusive fish in there that I rarely see, because I'm assuming once these coolie loaches go in a tank, we're never going to see them again. Um, so when I made this impulse purchase, it was semi-impulsive, and that's the important part. That's what I really want to get to making the point of, is I'm familiar with the fish. It was not like hey, look at that fish, the tag says it only gets four inches, I'll take it. You know, I know what kind of water conditions they need, I know their habitat needs, I know what they eat. So it wasn't as impulsive as simply purchasing a fish that I was completely unfamiliar with. It was simply impulsive in the sense that I had no intention of buying that fish today. You know, I didn't go to the store looking for that fish, and I don't really even have a need for it. It's just a fish that I can put in this tank, so I thought, why not? You know, it's something to do. So it's impulsive in that sense. I also know that even if it's completely impulsive, even if I buy a fish that I'm not familiar with at all, and I get it home and I find out, oh, wow, this thing's going to grow to be two feet long, 
I have a fish store that I can sell fish back to if I have any issues with them, um, you know, outgrowing my tank or I just change my mind a month from now and decide I don't really like this fish, it's too aggressive. I've got a good fish store that will actually give me a decent store credit for fish in good condition that I can sell back to them. So I've always got that as an option. And of course, I've got a good many fish tanks and some of them are fairly large. I've got a lot of different types of um, fish tank communities around the room. And by having so many different tanks, I've got options. See, this is the other tank I was thinking about putting them in. And it already has a lot of loaches in the bottom and it's got a ton of places to hide and it's got a kind of substrate that I think the coolie loaches would enjoy being in. Uh, the problem with this tank is this tank is extremely, extremely stocked. It's very, very heavily stocked right now. So I don't know if I really want to add to the bio load. And again, I don't know if I want to add even more reclusive fish in here because part of the bio load in this tank is fish we rarely ever even see. So do I want to add to the bio load while not really even making it more visually interesting except on the rare occasion that we get a glimpse of them? Um, yeah, I don't think so, you know. So we're still leaning towards my other tank, but the point is, is I do have options. I've got that tank, I've got this tank. I mean, worst case scenario, I could always do something in this tank. I don't think those little loaches would have any issue finding places to hide in here. And then, of course, I've also got my Black Ghost Knife Fish tank, which three little coolie loaches in there would also not really have any issue or any place to, you know, any problems with places to hide or habitat or anything else. Uh, the other tank I have in this room is a native tank, so this will not be an option for a possible place for the coolie loaches to go, but I do have three tanks upstairs as well, and they could go in any of those three should I change my mind or it not work out for these other tanks. So if you're going to make impulse purchases, that's okay. You know, we all do it. We're human. I like to get my little surprise treat for myself from time to time. I wasn't expecting that. Now I got some new fish I'm all excited about. That's okay. I didn't do it completely impulsively. I didn't buy a fish that I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. I have no idea how to maintain it or, or care for it. I have no idea what water conditions, you know, it's not that kind of an impulse purchase. If you make a semi-impulsive, you know, purchase, if you think about it enough to know, okay, well, I know this is impulsive, but I've got options when I get home, so it'll be okay. Or I've got options. If it doesn't work out, I can always return it. I can always take it back to some other place. I've got a buddy that's been looking for one of these, and I can always just give it to him. You know, just sort of think things like that through. What happens if this all goes south and doesn't work out for me? What are my options? You know, there's different ways to make impulsive decisions, and you can do it with a little bit of educated thought behind it, or you can do it completely impulsively. Generally, when we do it completely impulsively, we run into problems, and it's not good for anybody. So the next time you're going to make a little bit of an impulse purchase, just try to do that. Think it through a little bit more. It can still be impulsive, but just think, all right, what happens if this doesn't work out? What are my options? Where do I go from here? Look, you can see my Congos right there getting ready to spawn. See how those little eggs kick out? All that little debris you just saw go out everywhere. It was actually eggs being scattered. The brightly colored ones, of course, are the males, and then the duller ones are the females. And then, of course, everybody immediately swooshes in for a feeding frenzy on all the eggs that have recently been scattered around. So there's a little bit of bonus video for you. You got to see a little bit of my Congos spawning while you decided whether or not you want to rush right out and buy yourself some Congo Tetras, whether you have room for them or not. So make sure you've thought it through enough to know that you've got options if things don't work out or if you get in over your head or you find out you've got a fish that's really sort of beyond your capabilities of taking care of or whatever. As long as you've got options in some way you can deal with it, uh, you should be okay, and it's probably not worth beating yourself up for. We all do these things, I myself included. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe if you're not already. Uh, you never know what you're going to get with me, even when you're getting a video about impulsive fish buying. You also get bonus footage of gorgeous fish spawning. So it's definitely worth subscribing. Lots of good stuff on this channel. So thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you real soon on whatever I got coming up next.